So we just launched Prep and Star Prime subscription, which is like 150 plus courses under one subscription. So it has courses like C, C++, Java, Python, artificial intelligence, machine learning, cybersecurity, data structures, comparative coding, even company specific courses like TCS, NQT, Infosys, TCS Digital, Amazon, etc. The link is in the description of the video. Go check that out. I'm sure that you'll love that. Hello everyone, welcome. We are going to be solving an actual uh, Gen C Elevate Cognizant coding question. Now, uh, moving ahead very quickly. First of all, uh, right now, I guess Amazon, Microsoft and Wipro are hiring. Uh, the links to all of those have been posted on our social media handles. So make sure that you follow all the social media handles. Links are given in the uh, description below. Uh, we've, we post all of these off-campus drive updates on our uh, Instagram page, uh, WhatsApp, Telegram, elsewhere. So this is very, very important. Again, as always, top three comments get preference to Prime subscription. Absolutely free so let's have a look upon the question so this question i have taken from the actual question that came in cognizant so in fact we have approximately uh, 30 questions that we've gotten uh, from cognizant previous uh, uh, cognizant papers which would be happening over metal platform uh, you can find all of these questions so these are already uploaded uh, either you can go to the metal course and practice all the previous year coding questions here or you can also go to a cognizant course <coughs> With cognizant Gen C Elevate course that particularly I guess you can see here, right? So this is the course. So now moving ahead, uh, let's, uh, I will pause the video. I want you to read the question because I will not waste too much time in terms of reading the question. You can always pause and read a little bit more than I probably would. Uh, so pause here, read the first part and then again, pause here, read the uh, input output uh, samples that are given here and again uh you can uh, so that's pretty much about it right so if i'm to explain you a question so uh, what is happening in the question is that they have given you uh, this question may seem to you like th there's a very famous problem called uh, called in competitive coding called as uh, longest contiguous sum uh, or in fact in that case or, or largest con largest contiguous sum right so this is an opposite of that that is smallest contiguous sum in an array uh, but it's not actually that it may look like that and I'll try to prove you why it's not that so it's more or less like they wanted to ask a competitive coding question but eventually <laughs> whoever framed the problem it is not a competitive coding question it is uh, a general question per se but again they will ask you data structures and com one competitive coding one data structures question and two easy question from where so if I'm to tell you where do you prepare from is so either you can go to prep and start top 100 codes to prepare for the first two coding question which would be you know uh, medium difficulty so all the coding questions that are given here and for the data structures questions you can go here if you have if you don't have prep and start prime subscription but if you have prep and start prime subscription so in that case go to basic coding course intermediate coding course competitive coding course data structures once you complete all of those foundation course in that case either go to the metal course or you can go to go to the gen c uh, elevate course let's have a look upon the question you uh, i hope that you've paused the video and read uh, write the question so this is the question this is the sample output pause at the correct places so let's basically be uh, let's try to understand what the question is saying i'll not read the question but i'll tell you how what it is first of all they're giving you n number of days okay and it's about stock market so for example let's say you use zomato stock right now obviously in the stock market some days zomato stock is 50 rupees some day it is 53 rupees some day it is 49 rupees some day it is 47 some day it is 52 right now all of these changes will happen but what they are, they are not giving you this data. So they are not giving you this exact value of the stock. They are not giving you this. They are giving you something else. So initially what they are saying is somehow the stock price assume that will always start from zero. And then they are saying that, okay, on day one, day two, day three, day four and day five. So n days, we are giving you change in pricing. So let's say if they give you minus five as a value. So they are saying that, okay, the change in price from day zero to day one is this minus five. So this minus five, uh, minus five. So the pricing is this. Now let's say comma in the array, they say minus seven. So in that case on day two, the pricing would be minus 12, right? Because here difference they have given is minus seven. And then further on, let's say if they are saying uh, 14, plus 14. So in that case, 
here on day three, the stock price would become two. So basically we have to calculate all of these numbers first. And then based upon that, we have to say, the, uh, and you'll understand with the help of the example, right? So this is the sample input. What I've done is rather than explaining the sample input, I've kind of given, uh, created a graph for it, which would be easier for us to understand, right? So this is the change in pricing, pricing of the stock of stock. Now, initially the price starts from zero, the first value, which is minus three, nine, five, five, seven. So this change happens, this particular amount of change happens and the value is exactly the same, right? On the second day, minus seven, one, seven, one, three, six change of the stock happens. So it goes down how much it goes down this much. So the pricing becomes this much, right? Now again, increases by plus value, which is 35,466. So the pricing becomes uh, basically minus 21,000, right? Now again, 193, uh, because again, so on, you can understand all of it, right? So for us, what would be the best day for us to buy the stock? And they don't say about selling it. Our objective is simple. We have to buy the stock at the minimum price. They don't talk about selling. Maybe they'll sell after one year, five years, five days, 10 days. Selling is not mentioned. Just that your current objective is to buy the stock at minimum price. So what we have to figure out here is on which day the stock is minimum. So obviously the stock would be minimum here as well, right? So in that case, you have to figure out this. But one thing more, a lot of people will think that, okay, minus, minus and plus. Right. So obviously two minus and one plus. So obviously this would be the right answer. Right. So don't follow that logic with the second example. They've kind of disproven this logic. So if you look at the second example, again, mine uh, price starts from zero minus three, nine, nine, five, seven, which basically becomes this. Then again, minus uh, uh, one, seven, one, uh, three, six. So price even further reduces down. Then again, what happens is plus 1010. So price becomes this. Then 2000 plus price become this. So minus 26711. So price becomes this. So in that case, the best day to buy the stock is this day, even though you saw two positive numbers. So what we have to do is uh, we have to find the best day. So how it could be happening here is so, for example, a good way. And we'll have a look upon the code, but you'll kind of run a for loop starting from zero till here. Correct. And in that case, you'll create a variable called as min. Okay. So what I'll do is first of all, I'll calculate the sum of this first day, right? So I'll say that, okay, my min value is minus three, nine, nine, five, seven, right? So my four runs from I is equals to zero. Let's say, for example, and goes on till N, <clears throat> right? Then next time what I'll do is. I'll basically be checking the sum of just this. Now, if the this particular sum is lesser than this min value, so I'll update this min value. Right? If it is, then if it is, then I'll update it. Right? So, for example, what happens here is obviously this particular sum when I when I add it, so it'll become minus fifty seven ninety three. So I'll update it to minus fifty seven ninety three. Then I'll do the same thing. I'll start from zero again and I'll calculate the sum from here, right? Uh, or, or basically you can basically what do you do is you, uh, you can just go beyond, right? Or you can just simply add this particular part. We'll have a look upon the code with which we'll understand. Now, if this particular sum value is lesser than this, then we'll update. Obviously it's greater, so we'll not update it. Then we'll do the same thing. We'll go from here to here. Obviously it will not get updated. Then we'll go from here to here. And in this particular case, obviously the sum value will come out to be minus 87, uh, 80,794. So we will update it. So minus 8794 and whatever is the min value, finally we'll go ahead and print it. So let's have a look upon the previous examples also, right? Very quickly. So what will happen is first of all, again, I will calculate the sum of this part. So I'll write my min value is minus three nine nine five seven right then i will calculate the sum of this particular part right i will update the min value so my min value will become minus five seven zero nine three then i will calculate the sum of just this part using my for loop so what would happen 
the value will come down to be minus 21627 which is not smaller than this so we will not update this value will stay then again I will calculate the sum obviously the sum comes out to be 193 so I will not update it it will still remain then I will be calculating the sum till here obviously in that case it will come down to be minus 26518 so in that case still I will not update anything because this is still minimum so I will keep it so what let's let's go ahead and what we'll do is we'll have a look upon the code and very quickly I'll just explain you the code I've have the written the code already for you guys so let's have a look upon the code uh, I've given you the C++ code and the Python code uh, the C++ code is using both of both of the codes are using the same approach but the C++ code is a little better if you look closely that's what all I'm saying but uh, there's a one particular line which is here uh, which makes it look like even though there is only one single for loop but in terms of computation it goes on uh, and calculates it twice so uh, if you didn't understand that it's fine but but both of them would run perfectly the codes are not exactly the same there's a little different even if they look the same in C in python and c++ in terms of a little logic difference so let's have a look upon the code uh, so basically what we are first doing we are here uh, take, creating all the variables and taking the value of n which is number of days so for example seven days they are going to give the stock pricing in the second case we've created a variable called as arr wherein in and here we are basically taking inputs of it so basically what would be stored in the array this all of these values would be stored in the array then we are saying that okay price of the stock on any given day we are saying it's zero because they say that the price starts from zero and we create min value as zero why because if there are two conditions either the stock would be like this that okay it can be positive also it can be negative also so in that case the answer would be the lowest value here right uh, but they've given in the question that the stock price from, starts from zero so which is why we are initializing it as zero but in one case let's say if the stock price all of these array values are positive so what would happen is that the stock price would more or less look like this so in that case the answer would be zero because the minimum value would be zero on the day zero or day one itself. So either the answer would be negative or the answer would be zero. Okay, so which is why min also initialized to zero. Now let's have a look upon it, this array. So what this array is doing is, it's basically using price is equals to price plus ARR of i. Very simple, right? So on and then we are iterating through the array. So what we are saying here is that, okay, the current price can always be calculated from where the current price can always be calculated from this. So they've given us these values, right? So we can always calculate the current price by adding first this. So this would be the current price on day one or let's say day one. On day two, the current price would be sum of this of this. So basically what we are saying is previous price, so price is equals to price plus ARR of I. That's what we are saying in our code, right? So pretty simple. That's basically what we are doing here. And uh, we run in a for loop, which starts from zero and goes on till N, basically N minus one, but yeah, right, less than equal to. So let's go back to the code, right? And then what we are particularly doing here is that on any given day, we are saying that, okay, if the min value is greater than the price, right? So initially, let's say the price is zero or the min value is zero. So initially for loop will run, it will calculate the price of this. And then obviously, uh, price would be come out coming out as minus three nine nine five seven so we will update the min price using this so our min would be this value right next time our for loop will run again so what it will do is it will calculate the price of this by calculating that okay the current price is this so this plus this it would be minus 57 or something 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 now we'll check that okay minus 50 uh, min is this value a new price is this is this min value greater than uh, price? Yes, it is. So in that case, we'll update our min value will become this. So, so on, so on. Finally, what we'll do is we'll be able to calculate the min value as, as 
this value. So this code would run just perfectly. If you look at the Python code also, it's pretty similar and working in the same format. Uh, here we are taking the input here. We are basically adding all of these in, uh, values in a list and we are initializing, initializing the min as zero. And then we are running our for loop from the range one to n. And every time we are basically calculating the same stuff that, okay, first this part of the array, then till this part, then till this part, and then till this part, and then till this part, so on, so on. And then we are using min is equals to sum of ARR till i. So what happens is, if you look closely, so every time we are saying that, okay, the min value here is, so let's say currently we are, our i is here. So we are saying that, okay, till here is the min value. So it will also give us the same results, right? So that's pretty much about this particular video. What you can do to find all of these codes is, I will ask my team. Uh, so as you can see, the solutions are basically given in the Java and Python here also, but you can always Google 10, uh, sorry, Cognizant gen c elevate coding questions and i will ask my team so obviously prep insta's page comes on top so i will ask my team to put up a few questions of five or six questions here so you'll find one of the solutions of java python on this particular page and apart from that obviously these questions are already uploaded in the gen c elevate course and also the uh metal course that you can see here but 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 if you're a prep insta prime subscriber already uh, so in that case, first of all, complete basic coding, then intermediate coding, then data structures, and then comparative coding. If you're overall preparing for the coding part of Cognizant Gen C Elevate, uh, it is very important because they'll also give two more roles, even if they've not mentioned, which are Gen C Pro and Gen C Next. So Pro is, I guess, 5.4 LPA role. And then Gen C Next is, I guess, 7 uh, LPA role. Uh, it is very important for you to understand this because they only said skill bonus plus skill bonus last time they said 25,000 as skill bonus for gen c elevate and for gen c pro and gen c uh, next they mentioned the package but this time they are hiding it why because they want to uh, also judge your performance in the interview in the online test in the internship also when you are being given training and finally then they will decide based upon adding all of these values or adding all of these points that should should they give you twenty five thousand as a skill bonus, or should you be should they be upgrading you to five point four LPA role or seven LPA role? And um, earlier it was just only restricted to uh, you know what you do in the interview and what you do in the online test. But now they've become a little smart. They're like, okay, let let's actually let the person actually join the inter internship. Let actually the person complete the training also. Uh, we guess it'll be a little better to judge the performance over three months and then give them a package rather than just a one hour interview and a, a, a two hour test. So it's, they've become a smarter. So again, even for preparing for all of these interviews for not just uh, Cognizant and TCS Infosys, all of these companies, I'd recommend Prep Insta Prime. You'll get access to 150 plus courses like artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, C, C++, different coding aptitude, tracks for service-based, product-based and tying companies, Microsoft, uh, CoCube, projects, CS subjects like operating system, DBMS, SDLC, SQL, interview experience for top companies. So rather than buying one course from XYZ website, you get access like just like Netflix to all the 150 50 plus courses if you are preparing for gen c elevate in the interviews you are highly likely to get the gen c pro and gen c next role if you have popular skills certifications in ai cyber security ethical hacking cloud computing big data etc etc so very important so that's pretty much about it uh make sure that you follow us on our instagram also so prep star 2023 is what you should be following if you're watching it right now so <clears throat> I'll open this up here. So there are a few companies which right now are hiring. So uh, for example, Amazon is hiring and uh, uh, Cognizant is hiring, Off Campus, Microsoft is hiring, Morgan Stanley are hiring. Make sure that you follow us on the Instagram page of Prep Thank you so much. I'll see you up ahead very soon. Bye-bye.